Hey everyone, it's Julia Mark here from RV Love and we're sitting here enjoying a nice cool rainy day here in Virginia with our lovely new electric fireplace going. Yeah, we've been getting quite a few people excited about renovations and whether or not they should do one themselves and so we thought what a great opportunity to be able to share 12 lessons learned from doing our renovation. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. So an RV renovation is a lot of work. It's a lot more time, work, and money than you might expect, but is it worth it? For us, yes it was, but it's different for everyone and that's going to be up to you to decide. So here are some of the lessons we learned from doing our RV renovation. Number one is knowing your reason and your goal for this project. Yeah, is it something you're going to want to live in, travel in as we are doing, or do you plan to flip it to make a profit, or even just treat it as a hobby or something you can tinker on in your spare time? And also know what you have available to give it in this form of resources of time, skills, and money. Yeah, we'll talk more about those in a bit. For us, we were really clear. We'd already bought the RV older. We knew that it was livable the way that it was, and we knew we definitely wanted to renovate it in order to keep living in it. That was always the goal when we bought this RV. All right, number two is time. It's always gonna take more time than you think, both in the actual construction part of it and also the punch list that follows. And do you have the time? Are you gonna block out a chunk of time to do it all at once? Like or we you, did, yeah. You know, like we did, or are you gonna do a little bit of project, one little project at a time over a longer period. It's always going to take more time than you think and you need to be prepared for the unexpected. Yeah, there could be delays or you might find unexpected water damage or some of the things that we encountered that just really add to the project beyond what you thought when you first started. And when you're thinking about the amount of time you have to dedicate to an RV renovation, think about you know what you already have going on in your life. I mean if you already have a job, if you have a family or other commitments, I mean this is another job practically on top of that. Uh, maybe you're retired and you have some more time up your sleeve to be able to do that or maybe like us you just decide to put everything on hold and just focus on it intensely uh, for a period of time to knock it out which worked really well for us. While we did it in three weeks again really should have allowed three months to do it at a more comfortable pace. Yeah, you definitely need to think of the opportunity cost of that time. All right, the third lesson learned is that you need space. A lot a of lot it. A lot of space. <laughs> so you're going to be doing your RV reno indoors or outdoors. I mean, regardless, you're going to need a decent amount of space for this. Uh, as you would have seen from our videos, we were able to set up three tents, one for all of the furniture and gear going out of the RV. We had another one for like tiles and flooring and gear. And we had another one that was set up just for our incoming deliveries from Jane and my big shopping trip. And also all of the online shopping that was coming in sometimes one, two, three times a day we were getting delivery. So it allowed us to keep things organized and in their place. So one of the most important parts of the space for me was to have a really good workspace mm -hmm. so that I would not have to set up and tear down every day. The workspace was already ready to go and I had all the materials stored in places where I knew where everything was so I didn't lose any time with that either. Yeah, keeping well organized was really important in keeping the frustration down and just keeping that time efficiency in doing everything that needed to be done. Now, speaking of space, you can't just do something like this anywhere. I mean, if you're a full-time RV like us, if you don't have a friend or family member's property that you can park on, where we were so lucky to be able to park on Brett and Danelle's property in Oregon, that was a godsend to us. It wasn't until we arrived and spread out and set everything up that we realized, oh my goodness, how do we ever think we could do this anywhere else or in a campground, which was my initial crazy idea. Uh, some campgrounds won't allow this uh, kind of jobs to happen. We do know people that have uh, done a RV renovation. It hasn't wasn't as extensive as ours. It was more inside, but you're going to be creating noise. You're using power tools, um, banging with hammers, and that could infect the people around you in the campground or anywhere that you're staying really. So really something to think about with the space and the impact that all of you are spreading out and all of the noise is going to have on others around you. So number four 
Where are you going to live during the renovation? Now, if you're not a full-time RVer like us, you might already have a home or a condo that you're living in and that you're able to work on the RV project on the side, whether that's on your own property or somewhere else, which is another consideration. How far is it from where you live? Do you have to drive five, ten minutes to get to where you're going? Do you need to drive half an hour and an hour? Factor in all of the time that it takes to get there and back because that can really uh, take up a lot of time and really decrease efficiency and motivation. I think mm -hmm. for continuing on with the job it just becomes another effort to think about gosh now I've got to drive over there and take all my gear and this was actually really easy for us to be able to do it on site. That was and by living in the RV with the intensity of the schedule really all we did was work and sleep so we worked say 16 hours a day slept so there wasn't a whole lot of living going on if you were doing right. a longer project and you want to have more life <laughs> besides the project you definitely want to consider living outside of the project. Now if you're going to be living in the RV during the renovation as we did, I mean you might have been sitting there thinking we were a little crazy for doing that and you would probably would be correct in that. As you could see it was very messy, very disruptive and very chaotic living in the RV uh, throughout the renovation. But I think the important point to note here is couple of things. One is we did it really fast and two we were working really intensely for a short period of time. And a lot of the meals we prepared we prepared over at Brett and Danelle's space not inside our RV. Number five is the weather or climate conditions where you're going to be doing this renovation. We were really fortunate where we chose to do this in northeastern Oregon. We had gorgeous weather. We actually only had one day where the rain threatened. It didn't even rain that day. Right. Um, but we had really great conditions to be able to optimize our solar since we were doing this off-grid and we had really good conditions to be able to leave all of our tools and supplies outside and ready to go at all times. But you might be lucky enough to have access to an enclosed space. Maybe you've got a garage or a shed or a barn or mm. someone that you know where you can actually uh, do the whole uh, remodel or renovation inside and you won't be as subject to the elements of weather as we were. Uh, like Mike said, you know, we picked a place and a time of year that was really optimal for that and that worked out really, really well for us. Uh, number six is you need a plan and we did actually have a plan before we took on this project. We did and we have quite a few years of living in RVs. We have a lot of that experience but we also had quite a few months, I think four months, mm -hmm. living in this particular RV so we knew what was working and what wasn't. And it's part of creating our plan because of course we had Jane who flew out from Australia to help us. Uh, we had to make the most of all the time that we had when she was here. I created a spreadsheet for every single room or space or zone in the RV and specifically detailed what we had, what we wanted to change, what worked, what didn't and some of my ideas or our ideas to share with Jane took a lot of photographs of the RV and sent that to her as well so she was able to get the wheels turning about what she thought she might do when she got here. So by the time she actually arrived and we sat down and we collaborated on that plan we are actually able to get on the same page with that pretty quickly. So by the time we actually started tearing everything out of the RV we already knew exactly exactly what we were going to do, who was going to do what, and just went for it. All right, number seven is skills and the team you have available. So do an honest assessment of both your skills available and the skills of your team that you have available to you. As for me, I used to work in construction and I've done quite a few DIY projects in our previous home and our RVs, so I had a decent skill set coming into this project. We also had a really great skilled team mm -hmm. with Brett and Danelle having done their own renovation and Jane of course being a professional interior stylist. And know your limits. I mean you don't have to do everything and we didn't do everything. I think while Mark could have done the tile in the kitchen and the backsplash, to be honest we were starting to run out of time and decided to outsource that job because it just makes a lot more sense. You can obviously do a lot of research yourself and learn a lot of these things, but it does slow things down and sometimes if you're learning with trial and error that can slow down the process or you might make some mistakes you have to undo. Uh, but if you're a pretty handy person and you're just willing to give it a go, and especially if you don't have a crazy timeline like we did, uh, it's definitely there are so many things you can do yourself these days and that's going to save you a lot of money. All right, number eight is access to tools. And that's not just power tools to do the actual construction or demolition work. That's also tools and resources like dumpsters and like a workbench mm -hmm. and things like that. I consider all of those to be tools of the job. 
So whether you already own the tools or you borrow them, buy them, rent them, I mean those things if you don't already have them or you don't have access to borrow them from a friend or family member can add up and get pretty expensive. We use a lot of those tools almost every day of the renovation. So having access to a friend's set of tools, thanks Brett, they were invaluable to us in able to pull this job off. Yeah, and definitely do consider getting tools though because sometimes having the right tool can save you a lot of time. All right, number nine is the access and proximity to conveniences like a hardware store. Mm -hmm. There were days that our team went to the hardware store five and even six times in one single day. Um, so it's really important to have proximity to grocery stores and hardware stores and any of the other conveniences you need to do the project. And that includes a dumpster, which we were lucky enough to have on Brett's property or access to a local dump. And you'll probably need a truck to be able to dump that as well. So think about things like that. You're going to be offloading a lot of crap out of your RV if you you did anything like we did and uh, even things like shopping for what you need to actually decorate the RV we were in a small town with very limited resources and shops and the nearest town was really about two hours away and the nearest really big town that would have a greater selection was four hour drive away so we just jammed it out for two days straight shopping packed the Jeep, went to all of these great stores, but we had to know in advance what our plan was. We knew what the decor was gonna look like, what the style was, what was the color scheme. We knew exactly what it was gonna be, bought as much as we could in those two days. Yes, we did return some things, but, and the benefit of a lot of online shopping, we were able to pull it off. All right, number 10 is the support you have available. And I don't just mean the physical hands on the project, I also mean emotional and moral support. It's really hard to do this kind of job alone. Uh, if you're a solo person RVing, you are gonna need somebody there to provide moral support, you know, some hands-on support, of course, but even just somebody to, you know, give you a pat on the back, somebody to help, you know, with meals. And we were so lucky that we not only had the hands-on help of Jane, Brett, and Danelle during the renovation, but, uh, they were cooking our meals most evenings and that was an amazing help at the end of a hard working day that we had meals ready for us. We also had some company and just someone to really sit down and decompress and have a few laughs with and just having that friendship and that support and knowing that we're not doing this on our own. So it, yes, it was a lot of hard work, but we also had a lot of fun and some laughs as well. And that can really get you through a lot easier when you're doing such a big job. All right, number 11 is having a deadline. It's, if this is just a hobby, something you do in your spare time, then that's great. But if you want to really get this thing finished, you need to set yourself a deadline, a time that it has to be done by. That will give you immense power in being able to complete the project. Our deadline was having Jane jumping on a jet and heading back to Australia and having a film crew come in for those last three days to film us. So we knew we had to get it finished by a certain date and that just kept us going. I think the other element of having a deadline is that on those really long tough days mm -hmm. you can also see the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. saying okay it's only a couple more weeks I can survive this. Yeah, and we did our renovation in pretty much three weeks and we really would not recommend that. It, it was more intense. If there was anything we could change about what we did, uh, we don't have any regrets, but no, we would have liked to have done it in a more reasonable time frame. It's definitely the one thing I would have liked to see different. It really was a three month project that we pulled off in three weeks, but the only reason we were able to do it is thanks to the amazing team, Jane, Brett and Danelle helping us do this. And of course, Mark working around the clock, like what, 16, 20 hours a day? I had, I had some half days, 12, 12 hour days. <laughs> and last but not least, 12 is knowing your budget and, you know, is this financially worth it? RVs typically depreciate, and if, but if you buy well and you are able to do a lot of the work yourself, you might actually be able to increase the value of your RV. Which we managed to do. So whether you're buying an RV to make some improvements and then flip it and make a profit, or like us, you're buying it to modify it to suit your own needs for living, working and traveling and just make it more enjoyable. They're all considerations on you know how much time, work and money you want to put in. For us, it was worth it. We absolutely love it. But you know, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we were hoping that in today's video with some of the lessons learned that we shared with you today, will help you decide whether or not this is something you want to take on because it's definitely not for the faint of heart. But if it is, it's so worth it. Like mm. if it is something you're willing to take on and you give it a go as we did, it really is very, very rewarding. Hope you found this video helpful. We'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. I'm sure you've also got some tips and ideas about what you think people should think or know about before they undertake an RV renovation. Thanks as always for watching and until next time, see, see you on the road. road.